All right, guys, we're doing it. We are officially testing the new build on this very steep uh, gravel path. I have no reason to believe the bike can't do it, but we're gonna see just how well it can do it. We're at 66 volts. That's like 80% charge, something like that. I'm doing a light pedaling, maybe like 2% of the work. It's mostly throttle. I'm only consuming 800-ish watts, but this is a pretty healthy speed. Don't want to go much faster than this. Okay, so far no problem at all. It's getting steeper. It's giving a bit more juice. We're at about a thousand watts. Ouch, that was my face. Yeah, no problem. Even when it comes to traction, you guys saw this path, it was all eroded, but I didn't slip once. Okay, that was impressive. Okay, we need to talk more about this bike and my upgrades to it because there's some updates on the table here. So, coming from my last video, if you haven't watched it, definitely check it out. But right in the beginning, I do a drag race with the Fido T1. And the important thing there is that these two bikes stock are actually the same. 750 watt motors, uh, 48 volts. But of course, I did the upgrade to this bike. So in that drag race, you're gonna notice right off the bat that the Fido actually has a bit more uh, pep and zing to it. But eventually, after about two seconds, I do of course overtake it because I have more power. But that has been a weak point of this build. Between zero and five miles per hour, so the low end torque, it's really lacking in that field. So I was digging around the settings a bit more and I began to mess with the phase current. And quick disclaimer, being able to tweak all of these settings is new to me. It's a lot of fun, but I'm also kind of inexperienced with all these terms. So I was doing some research trying to understand what phase current is, how it's different than battery current. And I'll leave a resource I found linked down below that was pretty useful. I'm still not completely sure what it is. Like I can't explain it. I'm not qualified to do that yet. But from my testing, that's what affects the low end uh, torque. So I went to the settings and I upped it from the base 50 amps you know, the, the maximum of 50 amps to a maximum of 60 amps. And now the low end torque on this bike is adequate, I would say. It made a huge difference right where I needed it. This is a, an extremely steep downhill. <laughs> and I always try to not hit the brakes on this. We're hitting uh, 36 right now, just 38. Ooh. a blast 39 jeez so if you guys want to see all my settings here it is on the screen I currently have the maximum wattage capped at 1200 which I think I could easily do more than that but it's capped at 1250 the battery current is 30 amps, which by the way, I can see the amperage I'm pulling. And like right now I'm accelerating, and it's 20 amps. So I'm, I'm not getting anywhere close to the 30 amp limit, probably because the wattage is capped at 1200. And then the phase current, I upped from 50 to 60. So that's where I am right now. And the bike is, it's a lot more peppy. A phase current really does the trick for the low end uh, initial getting up to speed power. Now I do have to continue to collect data to make sure that I'm not uh, damaging the motor. So I can't recommend these settings quite yet, but I'm continuing to do my testing. Now, what if you guys left a comment pretty recently asking why I'm opposed to putting a direct drive hub motor on this bike? 
And the answer to that is I'm not. I am open-minded. My last build had a pretty awesome direct drive hub motor, 2000 watts, connected to a 72 volt battery, and it was awesome. The reason why I'm sticking with uh, a Bafang geared hub in this build is because they also have advantages. And for some reason, I feel like when people do custom builds nowadays, they completely overlook geared hubs and they go for the massive, super powerful uh, direct drives. And that's not always the best, the best use of your money. In fact, if you want my whole developed opinion on this, check out this video on the top right. This is where I explain uh, what makes a hub motor good. So it might be worth checking out. And for my research, there's really only one direct drive motor that meets all of my requirements for this bike that I could potentially use. And that's the all axle direct drive hub motor from Grin Technologies. And that's a really high quality motor. You can actually use it with through axles and all the different axle types. It has the L10 connector. The biggest issue with that motor, aside from the price, it's like 700 bucks just for the motor, but I'm not sure if it's compatible with fat tire bikes. And of course, that's what I'm rocking right now. But to get around the whole fat tire issue, I was thinking I could install a regular uh, front suspension fork on this that takes you know, a standard tire and then install a front direct drive hub motor on this bike. What do you guys think about that? Kind of crazy because I would have a standard kind of three inch wide tire in the front and then a, a fat tire in the back. I've also heard that uh, having a high powered hub motor in the front of your bike isn't the best for handling, although it's totally doable. There's tons of bikes that have uh, dual motor setups. And technically if I do this, this bike would be a dual motor bike, which would be interesting. Although then I would need to get a second controller and have two throttles and it would be a little bit weird. So those are my two options if I want a direct drive hub motor on this bike. Maybe the all axle motor fits a fat bike. It's a very expensive, I'm not sure. Or I could change out the front wheel to a more standard size and go front wheel drive. But then of course the third option is to keep the geared hub. And there's actually an upgrade you can do to the Bafeng motors to make them almost completely bulletproof. And that is to install steel gears in them. That's actually what Aerial Rider does with the X-Class and I think all of their motors. They have steel gears on the inside instead of nylon which makes the motors a lot more durable, low maintenance. Uh, I have to cross over 22. And installing the steel gears yourself is actually a, a pretty simple process. I think the gears themselves are like 30 bucks. So I think I'm definitely gonna do that. Of course, I'll make a video out of it. And that'll make the Bafang geared hubs just that much better. Finally. Okay, now I have to do it again. Oh, you guys want to go to 7-Eleven? I guess we're going this way. And see, in a situation like that where I have to dart across a highway from zero, having the increased phase amps and that low-end torque really saves my butt. There we go. Not too bad. Whew. But of course, if you guys know of any better solution that I'm just not aware of, or a better direct drive hub motor that might work in my build and have things like the L10 connector, fit a fat bike, all that kind of stuff, that's why we have the comments. There we go. But yeah, the more I uh, tweak the settings here and really fine tune the motor, the better and better the bike feels. So I'm a fan of how it is now. Ugh. And I really want to put those steel gears in the motor, really make the whole system bulletproof, which any opportunity I get to bulletproof my bikes, I take. There's nothing worse than uh, getting stranded. But we're at my destination, so that means we're at the end of the video. And how did this video sound? I'm using a different mic. I've been messing with the audio in the past couple of videos, trying to get it spot on, but the mic that I've been using in the past couple of videos, it's new. And 
I don't know, it's like really quiet, but then it sometimes it peaks when I talk, so it's, I don't know, it's been a little bit frustrating. So I'm using a different mic in this video. Let me know how it sounds. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it real.